We are live. <laughs> hi, Mara. Hi again. Hey, hi, Elsa. <laughs> so I would like to just uh, dive in. And I was thinking about our uh, con um, yesterday's conversation. And we started talking about coaching and then other stuff. But I realized that not many people uh, know what coaching is. And also because uh, there's a lot of conversation going on about coaching online, um, I, I feel that uh, people might uh, be embarrassed to ask what coaching actually is. Oh, so right. they just, you know, they sit there without answers and maybe they think that it's something that, you know, um, uh, is done like it's, it's something painful or how does it happen and all that. Would you like to uh, share your perspective of uh, what coaching is and maybe what coaching with you is? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for that question. It's, it's true. Uh, a lot of people think of coaching like athletic coaching or strategic planning or that sort of thing. Um, but there's so many different modalities and ways people work, which is why it's such a cool um, industry to be in. Um, I find my, pers my personal way of going about it is much more into the inner world of a person and your emotional realm. Um, because I do have the psychology background, but I don't work as a therapist or a clinician, um, I really like to explore how people, how people are experiencing what's going on in their life. You know, there's the events we have and then the way we experience it. And so I like to explore what their experience is. And if there's a place where they feel pain or confusion or they want to understand better why they're in a situation. We go into how they're viewing what's happening in their life, how they feel about it, how they're overall experiencing it. And I work to help them shift their energy and their perspective and see that there's a broader sense of how they can experience what's happening for them. And I call that getting intimate with ourself. So we really get down to the, the smallest place we can and like see what's there in the most unseen place to let something new come out of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and I'll pretend that I don't know what it is and I'll ask uh, maybe dumb questions. Okay. <laughs> and what you just, based on what you just said, like for instance, you use the word modalities. There are many mod modalities. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, explain me what those modalities, what does that mean? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> <laughs> there are no stupid questions, right? Because that is right. a, a good yeah. question. Um, just means different structures, different ways people have studied. Um, I would say structure, you know, the way they set up how they work or their angle that they take with a person, like there's specific types of biz, business coaching, or we're gonna use a lot of strategy, or um, there's hypnosis type uh, structures where there, it is again, more in the inner realm, or physical, like, like people who take people out on adventure, um, physical body training and then you go on adventures together climbing mountains or skydiving and working through fears that way so there's so many different ways to explore what a person wants to gain in their life okay so um and um, let's let's say i have arrived at your office or how do you how do we even work together with you <laughs> <laughs> usually through uh ref i usually work through referral uh, i do have a website up marleygilbert.com and people can contact me through there but uh i mostly work through um word of mouth and referral and um i sit down with a person and we just have a conversation first before we do any work together i want we i want us to sit down and dive in deep together so I know what they're really looking for and we can build from there and see if we're the right pair to move forward on a transformational journey together. Mm -hmm. So so yeah and I have a similar strategy I uh, have conversations with people first and uh, people don't pay me for those conversations because we want to figure out if we are a good match so there that's where we uh, sounds like we work uh, in a similar way 
uh, you didn't answer the question. How do, where do I arrive? Is it like, it's COVID time right now or where are you located? I see. <laughs> yeah, um, right now I'm operating through the Zoom format. So it would yeah. be just like we're talking right now. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I do meet people who are in the location, we go for walks, we do take walks and mm -hmm. have yeah. conversations like that if, if they uh, live nearby. Right. Um, okay. So, and I, I come to you and do I need to have a problem or how do we, how do I show up and what do I say to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, some people, a lot of people come with a specific thing they want to explore. For me, it's a lot around relationships and sexuality and how to, to deepen their connection there or their confidence there. But I also work in the spiritual realm, people who want to connect more to their spiritual self, um, have an expansive experience, um, understand how to walk with more trust in very uncertain times. And for me, that's this very spiritual place and how to hone that sense of um, feeling grounded and um, guided and trusting. So sometimes there's a specific, here's what I want to work on. But sometimes I simply ask, what do you need support around? Or how can this conversation uh, be extraordinary for you? And let the person sort of find, it always comes up, you know, even if they think, oh, I don't know, I don't know. It always bubbles up to the surface. <laughs> That's true. So uh, it sounds like I don't need to know uh, that what my problem is or what I want to work on. I just feel like Mara could be helpful or... I would like to explore yeah. the world or myself uh, yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one that way. Sounds, you know, that sounds so much more secure. I don't need to know. I just go there. And, you know, uh, of course, I'm a coach and I know the, the, the terminology and all that, but it's fun to play like this. Yeah, but like uh, the word that we use, uh, create space. Coaches create space. Yes. Coaches create a safe space. Yes. And uh, you are not, uh, no, I mean, not you, but the clients, our clients are not forced to go to places where they don't want to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they are not ready to go. Mm, yeah. Um, you mentioned that you mostly work on relationships and spiritual uh, realm. Do I need to be in a relationship to work with you? You do not have to be. You can be, but you certainly don't have to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if I have a partner, can we both work on our relationship under your guidance? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yes. But what if we go um, and... Uh, tell you Mara you know Mara we have a business together and we want to you, your help in uh, expanding our business is that something that you can help with or you draw a line there uh, because business also means relationships yeah yeah I would say um, if we're going to look at your business together um, I'm not going to what I would help you with would not be about how to get from X level of income to Y level of income, but how you are relating to your business, um, what you want to be more connected to in your business, um, where do you feel like you can't get something done? We would always be looking at how you're experiencing and relating to it versus here's the strategy to, to make a million this year. That's not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's very interesting, and I actually shared this with you. Uh, I'll share all, also it, it again, and uh, so maybe some people um, find it useful to hear that I have had people who come actually to me uh, for help in business, and actually just what you said, how do I reach uh, such and such um, turnover yeah. uh, a month, like a million a month or uh, stuff like that, and when we start uh, talking more and having deeper conversations uh, and uh, trying to figure out why that number uh, is important for them, 
yeah, then uh, mm -hmm. we actually get you know, sh uh, shift to working on relationships, mm -hmm. on other stuff. Yeah, and that's how I shifted from business to life. Ah, <laughs> yeah, so cool. it, 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 yeah, it is. Go ahead. Life. I want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. It is very related, and um, and not just uh, for women as uh, people might think. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, men have started out by talking about business and mm -hmm. business marketing or strategies or whatever, but actually we end up talking about deeper stuff, deeper personal stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it's beautiful. And I think that uh, you guys, if you uh, are watching and uh, think about maybe sometimes in the future working with Mara or I, you already feel that if, if there is that energy that uh, um, makes you a little curious and that you can now uh, yeah reach out and we yeah, can yeah. discuss if we can uh, have a schedule a conversation online or so um, okay. I again like yesterday uh, I don't want to make this conversation long because we're yeah. going to meet uh, again tomorrow but I have a question okay based on what we discussed yesterday and okay I have to shift the subject if that's fine with you yes definitely <laughs> remember that at the end of uh, our conversation i mentioned you being an actress mm -hmm. yes and i noticed something and this is what coaches do we notice languages mm -hmm. uh, how, how we use the language and i noticed that you uh, corrected me very gently by giving the answer um, where you said, yes, I am an actor. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will uh, talk about uh, maybe more um, why I noticed that, but could you explore on that? Do you have anything to say about that? Yes, absolutely. So that's a thank you so much for noticing and asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is a a lot of female actors now want want the term to just be actor because there's the sense of actress highlighting that you're a female therefore there's a sense of potentially it's it's related to the patriarchy at least in america where actress feels a little bit lower on the totem pole than actor and we are all for uh studying and working the same craft you know there isn't coach and coach s or scientist and scientist S, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, doctor, doctor S. So it's um, it's to say we're of e we're on the equal playing field, mm -hmm. um, particularly in terms of getting paid, because there is still the, the um, women getting paid less in across many industries in America, and it does happen a lot in the um, acting and entertainment industry. So to say we are walking on the equal, equal as equals together, creating work as actors. And that's why a lot of, you'll hear a lot of women say we're actors. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you. I have an additional question about the word actor. When you say actor, does it uh, sound like neutral, gen gender neutral or masculine? Um, to me, I feel like it sounds, to me, it sounds gender neutral, but I do feel like it's, it maintains a masculine identity in the culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you, uh, I don't know, this is probably a stupid question. <laughs> do you believe in anything being gender neutral <laughs> or uh, anybody? I mean, anybody. Do, do I believe in anybody being gender neutral? Mm -hmm. um, do you mean in terms of whatever like, you <laughs> however you decide to answer this i think it's an exciting time to ex to explore what is masculine what is feminine um especially in the transgender community there's um many actors in the transgendered community that don't identify as male or female and so um there's an importance to say, we don't wanna put people in boxes or say you can only be male or you can only be female. Um, and in particular, exploring gender neutral lives on, on stage and on screen. Um, 
And, you know, it, it bears the question in general, what is masculinity? What is femininity? I like to work a lot with that as well in my coaching because uh, there there is a fluidity between both energies. It's not doesn't mean man and woman. It's simply energy, and we both have both in us, um, and they inform each other and uh, work together and enhance each other for an individual to be who they are. So I look at it that way. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's very interesting because it's very different from. Uh, where I come from, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, just uh, just an, one more question, because I got really curious. Um, when you, you when you think about your identity, is it? And you just said that um, it's just energy, and mm -hmm. you talked about neutrality, and you also said that tra transgender people uh, feel that they don't belong to any gender, which I cannot quite agree with. I think that's why they tr uh, transition. Oh, well, um, let me, can I clarify? I don't mean sure, all, yeah. I don't mean all transgendered individuals. Mm, yeah. No, of course, yeah. But there are, there are some, there are um, a number that feel what they call non-binary or gender fluid. So they're- uh -huh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what you meant. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's interesting. It's really based on the culture and um, why I noticed that is because you know, when when we develop as individuals, as humans, uh, we really have this unique um, gift, the language. Mm -hmm. And our development is based on, you know, development of the language. Yes. And uh, of course, I, I mentioned yesterday that I am a Latvian. And uh, in the Latvian language, everything is either feminine or masculine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are several languages like that, but there are also like Russian language. I uh, understand uh, the Russian as well. And they do have three genders. They uh -huh. have masculine, feminine, and neutral. Uh -huh. In Latvian, there is no such thing as neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, also, therefore, I think I identify very strongly as a female. Yeah. And my uh, surname, Berzina, has a feminine ending, whereas my son, Berzins, has a masculine ending, S. Oh, yeah. Yes, and I, um, and often it happens that um, people know my son and uh, they address me as Miss Berzins. Uh -huh. And I don't like it because I identify so strongly as a female. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, similarly, people who know um, me as Ilzi Berzina, uh, when they uh, think about my son, they might uh, misspell their surname if they had to uh, do something in writing and uh, spell it with the ending A, which mm -hmm. would make him feminine and he wouldn't like it. Yeah. Um, in Latvia, we have two uh, words. We have actieris and actrice. Can uh -huh. you already... Yes, yes, which which the second was um, the female actor, yes. and um, I I just know I uh, that in Latvia if you addressed an actress as an actor, they would not like it. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's very very different culture yes. wise where we are coming from, and of course we can uh, through communication we can identify these things and understand each other better, understanding our backgrounds. Yes, yes. So there are similar things. Point. Yeah, <laughs> there are similar things going on about um, you know, race and skin color, which is very different uh, how uh, it's looked at because of where I come from. But that's mm -hmm. probably a, a discussion for yeah. another time. But. I just, I just uh, thought that it would, it was interesting to point it out. Do you have any questions that you want to ask me based on this or what we discussed yesterday? Um, I, I don't know so much of discussing it yesterday, but based where we are right now, um, mm -hmm. you, when you, how long have you been living in America? I've never actually asked you that. Yeah, I, um, I. Uh, moved permanently um, because I was traveling back uh, back and forth before uh, mm -hmm. years before but I moved permanently 
at the beginning of uh, 2013. Okay. Yes. So it's um, eight years. Um, well, in January, it will be eight years. Now. Wow. Yeah. And did you feel that there was, um, did you have to learn this beautiful way you, you already have in you that you recognize differences and you want to understand the different ways people speak and um, what, how they came to view things? Did you find that was already in you when you moved or was that a skill you realized being in such a different culture you had to gain? Mm, uh, that, thank you for the question. Uh, back in Latvia, I worked in the translation and interpreting uh, business for uh -huh. many, many years. I actually own a translation uh, company and I've worked with uh, people from many uh, countries, uh, nationalities, etc. And I've, I've uh, been uh, watching and observing things like that often because um, I was in the middle of people trying to negotiate often when there were conversations, talks, uh, politicians, business people trying to uh, reach uh, an agreement and uh, being not able to reach an agreement because of how they view the world. It's just, uh, it's often um, felt ridiculous because <laughs> I also wanted them to reach that agreement, but they yeah. Uh -huh. because of these um, things and that um, uh, of course I had to be neutral for, to the clients and I, I simply interpreted yeah but I learned a lot I learned mm -hmm. a lot and that helps me in coaching uh, I actually started studying business um, because I was more and more interested in the relationships in business but as I studied business I have an MBA degree I, uh, my MBA, uh, MBA study was actually on the culture, how mm -hmm. culture affects economy. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's, uh, I have been uh, interested in these things yeah. and watching because I have the lingu linguists background mm -hmm. as my first education, the second is business. So yeah, it's not just random. It's <laughs> uh, many, many years of observations. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I definitely feel that from speaking to you and uh, reading some things you've written um, on in our group, where it just, I see how language and how you want to examine it and pick it apart and explore the meanings and the words is so important to the work you do. And it's, it is such a skill for a coach to notice those subtleties of you know, what does that word mean to the person and how do they experience that when they say that out loud? what's behind that. So that's a, a such a powerful thing you bring to the table. <laughs> Thank you so much. I like to hear good words, of course, <laughs> like everybody does. <laughs> oh, Mara, uh, since we started talking about um, gender, and I kind of like took the lead today, the gender is very related to sexuality, which is your realm. Yeah. How about tomorrow we talk about sexuality? That and sounds good. Talking. Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> so I, I hope that we got everybody really, really uh, interested in uh, in this and join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we are meeting earlier, right? At, a, at 11 a.m. Yep. 11 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll sign off out from 